Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Hi, friends. We are live. That's right. We're live. So that means you can post comments, ask questions, and participate in the show. My name is Wimmy, and we're going to spend some time together. Hoo, hoo, hoo. So I want to read a little bit of this book. Just the first two pages. This book right here is called Shark Lady, the true story of how Eugene Clark became the ocean's most fearless scientist. Okay, check this out. <laughs> here we go. Two pages. It was Saturday, and Eugene wanted to stay at the aquarium forever. She wanted to smell the damp, salty air and stare at the glittery rainbow of fish. She wanted to keep watching her favorite animals, the sharks. Oh, <laughs> Eugene pretended she was walking on the bottom of the sea. Oh, what would it be like to swim? with her sharks, oh, to breathe underwater with gills of her own. More than anything, she wanted to find out. Oh, man, okay, so that's the start of Shark Lady. And oh, man, okay, we're gonna get into a song inspired by a line I read in there. Okay, so here's what I want you to help us out with. Can you tell us a sea creature? I'm gonna put it in the song. Here we go, ready? There's a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a hole. There's a hole. There's a hole in the bottom of the sea. Oh, there's a shark in the hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a shark in the hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a shark. There's a shark. There's a shark in the bottom of the sea. Oh, what sea creatures should we add? To the song. Oh, a shark indeed. There's a shark in the hole in the bottom of the sea. Dolphin. There's a shark and a dolphin in the hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a shark and a dolphin. There's a shark in the bottom of the sea. <laughs> Dolphins and sharks. Tell us more sea creatures. Octopus. Here we go. There's a shark and a dolphin and an octopus in the hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a shark and a dolphin and an octopus in the hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a shark. There's a shark. There's a shark in the bottom of the sea. Oh, I wonder how many I can memorize. Oh, it's getting tricky even at three. The next sea creature. Let's see. Oh, oh, oh. Dolphin, an octopus, a shark. Oh, man, look at all of those from Teddy, Addie, and Grace. Wow, okay, glowing fish. Here we go. There's a shark and a dolphin and an octopus and a glowing fish in the hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a shark and a dolphin and an octopus and a glowing fish in the hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a shark. There's a shark. There's a shark in the bottom of the sea. Oh, oh man, this is getting tricky. Clown fish. Ha <laughs> ha, hey guys. Okay, clown fish, great. Okay, there's a shark and a dolphin and an octopus and a glowing fish and a clown fish in a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a shark and a dolphin and a octopus and a glowing fish and a clownfish in the hole in the bottom of the sea. Oh, there's a oh, shark. There's a shark. There's a shark in the bottom of the sea. Oh, man. I think I may have already met my match. Oh, no. Seahorse. All right. I'm going to wrap it up with seahorse. And then you, if you want to keep singing this. Good going, okay? Let's see if I remember them all. <laughs> I think we forgot. There's a shark and a dolphin and an octopus and a clownfish and a glowing fish and a seahorse, and I think I missed one in the hole in the bottom of the sea. <gasps> There's a shark and a dolphin and a clownfish and a seahorse and an octopus and lots of creatures in the hole in the bottom of the sea. <laughs> There's a shark. There's a shark. There's a shark in the bottom of the sea. <laughs> Thanks, friends, for helping out with that song. I'm so glad we're here together. Like I said, it's live, so you can interact with us. If you have questions or comments along the way, let us know. Right now, here's what we're going to do. We together are going to write a story. <laughs> we call this three-sentence story, beginning, middle, end. That's what we do is we write a story in three sentences. And you are going to help us out with the beginning, middle, and end with your words because the three words come from you. Now, I envision this story starting in the bottom of the ocean, in the sea. So maybe it's a sea creature. But who knows what's going to be in the story because we don't know until you share some words. So a person, place, or thing, aka nouns, if you have an idea, nouns work best for this little game. The first sentence will set the scene. In the second sentence, there will be a problem. And then in the third sentence, what do we do? We have a 
solution. <laughs> now these stories, they sometimes become outlines to longer, more detailed stories. Sometimes these stories become chapter one, and then it gets extended and it goes further. Sometimes one little part of the story becomes the start of a brand new idea. We never, we never know. But right now, the goal, the challenge is to write a story in three sentences. The first word, what's it going to be? It comes from you, our friends, the viewers, the colleagues, the per, the co-writers of this story. So let's find out. It's going to be in the bottom of the sea, most likely. Barbecue chips. <laughs> I think sea creatures love barbecue chips. Here we go. A shark was swimming along the bottom of the ocean, enjoying some barbecue chips. All right. So we're starting to know the scene. There's a shark on the bottom of the ocean, enjoying some barbecue chips. But then, oh no, there's a problem. And the problem is inspired by Ben Franklin. <laughs> These stories, we never know where they're going to go. Thanks for that suggestion, Ben Franklin. All right. A shark was swimming along the bottom of the ocean, enjoying some barbecue chips. Suddenly, the shark remembered the advice of Ben Franklin to not eat barbecue chips underwater. This is a fiction story, by the way. If this was nonfiction, I think I would have my facts wrong. <laughs> but that's a problem. It's not, uh, it's not, is that, is that a problem? I don't know if that's a strong problem. I think I might need to do some revising right away. Because the shark's probably thinking, this is not a problem. I'm enjoying the, the um, barbecue chips. So the problem, I guess the problem is eat, we just got to figure out something else for the shark to eat. Because the old adage, don't eat barbecue chips under the ocean, <laughs> applies here. So how do we solve this problem? What is the shark going to eat instead of the barbecue chip, chips? <laughs> okay, lion licking water. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Okay, you don't remember that quote from Ben Franklin? <laughs> yeah, like I said, this is a fiction story instead of um, a nonfiction. Oh man, the lion, the lion, okay, pie? Maybe pie is part of the solution. Uh, let's go back to the comment about the lion licking the water. I'm gonna try to remember that one. Yeah, okay, so the lion was licking water. That's part of this, okay, here we go. Let's see what happens with pie and the lion. We'll combine those, okay. A shark was swimming along the bottom of the ocean and joined some barbecue chips. When suddenly he remembered the advice of Ben Franklin, don't eat chips underwater. <laughs> Just then a lion was licking the water, eating a piece of pie and said, hey, I'll share some pie if you'd like some. And the shark was like, yes, that will work. Pie instead of barbecue chips. <laughs> All right, we got a story, right? We had the beginning, we had the middle, where there was a problem to be debated if that was truly a problem or not. And then the solution, the lion shared some pie. Oh, I wonder what kind of pie it was. We could add that detail. We could, we could. Well, friends, here's what we do next. We take a look at what our friend Michael has been working on backstage in the women's lab as we've been working on this story. That's right, we're gonna go to Michael in our very own women's lab in Grand Rapids, Michigan and see what he's got. Hey, Michael, how are you? Hey, Wimmy, how are you? <laughs> Good. Have you heard that uh, that phrase from Ben Franklin? Don't eat barbecue chips underwater. I have. You have? <laughs> Surprise. Where? Where did you hear this? <laughs> <laughs> from you. Oh, okay. It was earlier today. You heard earlier this. today. But I'm All pretty right. sure that's uh, that should be that should go down as one of the famous quotes that we we should know. Yeah. Yeah. Don't eat barbecue <laughs> chips underwater. Yeah. yeah. So, hey, let's get back. Let's let's see how what you yeah. got. Let's. Uh, <laughs> what do we got for the women? Oh man, I can't wait to see this. Oh, look at that. Oh, I'm riding the shark. Is that a young Ben Franklin right there? That is a young Ben Franklin. Yes. <laughs> cool. And there's the oh the lion and uh yep the chips and the pie it's all there yeah the young ben franklin didn't just say a quote he actually brought pie oh nice yeah nice so let's see if we can add some more um illustrations to this story let's do it friends here's how it works oh thanks for the shout out um friends watching uh if you have an idea for something to add post it in the comments maybe it's more food maybe it's more sea creatures maybe i don't know we'll see what you come up with and friends you can oh marshmallows uh, michael marshmallows yeah of course don't right? eat barbecue chips underwater 
And please remember to bring marshmallows. <laughs> yes. yes. So, Wimmy, can you help me spell marshmallow? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And while we're doing this, I'll tell our friends at home, you can download the Wimage app for free. It's in the Apple Store. The app that Michael's using, he created, started it, and got it rolling. You can download it for free and make your very own Wimage uh, in the Apple Store for iPad. Uh, so Marshmallow, all right, so you're going to add a word. You press plus, and then you can type it or speak it. Uh, but Marshmallow is M-A-R-S-H-M-E-L-L-O. And Marshmallow was his name. Oh, there was a Marshmallow had a name. And Marshmallow was his name. Oh, M-A-R-S-H-M-E-L-L-O. This is tricky. M-A-R-S-H-E-L-O-O. -O. Wait, is it? And Marshmallow was his name. Oh, <laughs> there's too many letters. That works better with bingo. Marshmallow. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Voice. That was awesome. That was that, friends, how you'd use the voice dictation. And, um... Marsh, I may have spelled it wrong. I think did so. I, I think I did. <laughs> I was too busy singing. Uh, hey, the Gorbies are recommending peach pie. That's a good detail. Oh, or is it apple blueberry pie? Oh, it could or be marshmallow. So marshmallow peach blueberry pie. So many things. Yeah. All right, so I spelled, cream. I've spelled it, and I, Wimmy is now holding a stick of marshmallow. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Put it up a little higher. I see the marshmallow on the stick. Oh, look at that. I like it. Mmm. This is making me hungry. You know, maybe we got to um, share with the shark. Yeah, indeed. Because the shark was, that was the start of the whole problem is the shark just wanted to eat some chips. And then, uh, um, you know, then it got problematic from there. Oh, there's a sneaky snail. Yeah, we can add that as well. Oh, painted turtle kid. So many great ideas. I love it. I, oh, a squid. Squid. Oh, they're amazing. Squid. They are. Man. Wow. Well, awesome, Michael. Um, I think it's uh, so fun creating, expressing. And uh, let's see, did you, are you going to put a, I want to see if you, did you put a squid in or what, what did you put in? I actually put a sneaky snail. Oh, a sneaky snail. Well, let's see if we can find it. Maybe it's, if it's so sneaky, it would be hard to find, right? Um, let me reduce the size. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad you've got a big smile on your face. Me too. That makes me feel good. Okay. I got a big smile. Okay. Let's see. A sneaky snail. Where is it? Friends, do you see the sneaky snail? Wait a minute. I see two sneaky snails. Yeah. Right? Sneaky snails run in groups. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like another quote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but don't quote right. me, please. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, Michael... As always, a great time working together, creating together. Thanks for making today's Wimage. Awesome. So excited to continue this relationship with the DIA and all of our friends in Detroit. We love you guys. Yeah, Detroit, Detroit. That's right. We love working with the DIA, and I'll, I'll mention it right now. The last Saturday of every month, we get to do these cool shows. Um, so we'll, we'll tell you about the next one coming up. But right now, this is the time in the show where we're going to do something called Exploring Art. And we're going to explore a very specific piece of art. And this whole show is inspired by this one piece of art. So let's, uh, let's right now officially say it's time for Exploring Art. Hi, Wimmy. How are you? Oh, good. I'm, I'm the sneaky snail. Those are so funny. They were just like, mm. yeah. I love that they travel in groups. I did not know that. I know. <laughs> Michael said don't quote him on that, though. Right. I, I won't yeah. quote him. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm so excited. You are not only running today's show, but you are here to join us right now as we look closer at the piece of art that inspired the whole show. Tell us about the piece of art we're about to explore. The title is Watson and the... Shark. Shark. <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. Yes. Let's take a moment and look at that. So this is the piece of art, friends, that we will be exploring closer today. And so I have some questions. So I'm going to make it more full screen. Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. So, Wimmy, I'm wondering if you and our friends at home can tell me some things that you noticed in this painting. 
Well, right away, I noticed the clouds and there's boats in the, a lot of boats in the background. Yeah, when you say there are clouds, what do you, what do you see that makes you say those are clouds? Uh, well, I've seen clouds in real life up in the sky and there's lots of different clouds and I recognize the shape. They're like puff, puffy. It's like a bite, it's like a marshmallow. <laughs> yes. In our story. Oh, that's true. That's fun or cotton or something. And then yeah. you mentioned that those look like boats. And what do you see that makes you say those might be boats back there? Um, well, um, a boat is something that typically floats in the water, right? And oh my goodness, there's, there's the shark. We'll get yes. to that in a minute, right? There, yeah, they see Andrus to see the shark. Um, but the boats and um, uh, you asked what makes me think it's a boat or it looks like a boat? Well, right. it, it's in the water. And so yes. I think of an object floating in the water that people are in that I just, I've seen boats out in real life. What yeah. else on the boat? I'm wondering if there's any details you notice about the boats right there. Can you see oh, anything? That... Oh, sails. I see sails. Yes, those do look like sails to me as well. I notice they're white and it looks like maybe there's some wind because they look like they're maybe they're flapping. Hmm. Oh, another Ooh. friend of yeah. the Andrews family said they noticed people trying to save someone. There's a lot of people in that boat and you're right. It looks like somebody was in the water struggling. Yes, friends at home, what else do you notice in this painting? Hmm. Oh, there's the marshmallow clouds again. <laughs> oh, I noticed yeah. that they're slightly yeah. different colors. We saw the white Ooh. puffiness and we saw some darkness in the clouds. So this is another friend said I, they're wondering if this is the Boston Tea Party. Ooh. And let's take a look again at that um, painting and we'll yeah. see if there are things in this painting that would have our friend think that this might be the Boston Tea Party. Well, I think the Boston Tea Party, um, there was something about throwing stuff like tea off of a boat, right? So it's kind of a similar environment, right? People in the right. water and the boat. and I noticed the clothing of the people. It does look like this took place quite a long time ago because people today don't usually dress like that with the hmm. puffy sh shirt sleeves and the jackets. Yeah. I, I wonder when this was painted. painted. I wonder that as well. There are there's a friend from the DIA who's going to be on the show in a couple of minutes who will tell us more about this painting. Cool. I and we have some oh, more people. thoughts from people. Friends. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I see. Look at those teeth. Do you see the teeth on the shark? Yes, that's one of the um, details that I think helps us know that this is a shark and not a dolphin. Wait, do dolphins have teeth? Are little they, different teeth? Should they might have teeth, but they're not as sharp as shark's teeth. Well, oh, yeah. I think I did know that. Yeah, I hope the man with the spear, uh, yeah, I, I hope the guy is okay. Do you think the guy in the water will be okay? I hope so as well. There are so many people trying to, looks like, rescue him out of the boat. Yeah. So I think there's a good chance. Hmm. So we have a few more comments from some friends, but... Um, Friends watching at home, if there's anything else you noticed that we haven't noticed yet, please tell us. Ooh, look at the color along the water. I see there's yellow. Does, do you think the sun is coming up or going down? Ooh, that is a good question. Hmm. I think it's going down. That's my. That's what I think. I think you're right. Yeah, there are a lot of men in the boat. Mm -hmm. That's a good, great observation. Yes, thank you friends at home for sharing what you noticed with us as we explored this really cool painting called Watson and the Shark. Hmm. I wonder how long it took to paint. Wouldn't that be cool if we could talk to the artist? But I think the artist, I, I just don't know. I think it was painted a long time ago. Well, Do you think Merlin knows? I think he knows a lot that he could tell us. Oh, yes. So how about I will take off and I okay. will bring Merlin in. All right. All right, friends. We get to spend some time with Merlin, who's from the Detroit Institute of Arts, and he knows a lot about this painting and this artist. So let's welcome Merlin. Hi, Merlin. Hello. How are you? Oh, good. We've been looking really close at this painting, and mm -hmm. our friends at home have been wondering, too, and noticing things. So we'd love to find out what you've read and learned and know about this painting. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I saw in the in the screen, somebody mentioned the Boston Tea Party. Now, the painting itself isn't the Boston Tea Party, but it was t uh, painted shortly afterwards. So that's why they all look like they would be there. Great connection. Our friends noticed that. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, now the painting that you're looking at is actually telling a true story. The person in the water, his name is Brooke Watson. Now he's only 14 at this time. Uh, he was apprenticed to be a merchant. That means he's learning how to do a job. He's learning how to take ships around the world, bring them, you buy things, bring them back to America and to sell them. And what happened was he decided one day it was very hot and he wanted to go for a nice swim to cool off, right? Like we yeah. all do that in the summer, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. And so he hopped in the water. He decided to swim around. He's having a good time and he feels something tap at his leg and he's wondering like, what is that? Right. Yeah. And then this thing came back and it turns out it's a shark and it bit him in the leg really hard and it hurt him really bad. Now what's surprising and scary about that is that doesn't happen very often at all. That's very rare. Right. So that's what scared right. him so much. Yeah. And so his friends, they're all scared too. Wouldn't you be? Yeah. And so yeah. they all hop in the boat and they come out to come rescue him. And that's the scene the artist is showing in the painting right here. Wow. The artist, his name is John Copley, and he actually knew Brooke Watson. He met him in England. Okay. And so what happened was the crew was able to rescue Brooke. Um, you see that guy who's got the big spear looking thing in his hands, right? Yeah. Yep. He actually stopped the shark from killing Watson. Whoa. Um, was able to keep him away. You see the guy in the middle there throwing the rope to him. Watson yep. was able to get a hold of that. They were all able to yep. pull him onto the boat and rescue okay. him. Wow. Yeah. Whew. That's amazing. The story that it was a real story with real people. Mm -hmm. And um, do, when do you know, or roughly when was the, you said during, just after the Boston Tea Party, mm -hmm. but remind me what, what year or years was that roughly? So the Boston Tea Party was in the 1770s. This particular painting was made in 1782. Whoa. So it's, yeah, not too long after. 1782? That's like 240 some years ago. Exactly. We were still fighting the Revolutionary War when that happened. Wow. When that painting was made. How did the painting survive? And it's still, we can, people can still look at it today, right? It's absolutely. It's on display in the museum. We're very lucky. A lot of people who had this painting took very good care of it. And so wow. now we can come see it uh, in the Detroit Institute of Arts in our American galleries. Wow, that is so amazing in, in, in the detail and the painting. And mm -hmm. I was wondering, maybe I don't know if you know or not, we noticed the sun and the horizon and the clouds. Do you think or do you know, was the sun going up or down? I think it was going down, if memory serves me correctly. Okay, because if it was based on the real life experience, that would mm -hmm. tell us if when this happened, if it was at morning or night. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Wow. Wow. Well, Merlin, um, thank you so much. Is there anything else that you would like to share with us about the yeah. painting or John or the DIA? So when you come to the DIA and you're looking at that painting, right? If you yeah. go look to your left, you're going to see a picture of a man um, above a chair. The man in that picture is the man throwing the rope in the painting. Whoa. We're, we're the only museum that got a hold of that picture. And now we have it on display. Man, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. And tell us when and how friends can come to the museum. They can come to the museum uh, Wednesday through Sunday. We're open Wednesday, and Friday, well, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 9 to 4. And on the weekends, we're open from 10 to 5. They can come and visit us here in Detroit, Michigan, if they live in Wayne, Oakland, or Macomb counties of Michigan. It's 100% free for them to come visit. Yeah, just need to go online awesome. and get their ticket ahead of time. 100% free. Awesome. And there's resources and lots of things online with the website, uh, dia.org. Friends mm -hmm. can always check out that for resources. And, and this has been, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, and us gallery teachers, we usually take kids on tours, but obviously we can't do that now. We also are putting videos online for the kids and parents to watch together that talk about our collection. I love it's that. on our YouTube page. Oh, great. And you can find the YouTube page, I bet, through the DIA.org or just go on YouTube and type Detroit Institute of Arts or DIA and you'll find it. Nice. Absolutely. Well, well Merlin, it's been so great chatting and uh, thanks so much for all you shared with us today. Not a problem. It was a pleasure to be here. Have fun. <laughs> I love it.
it. I love it. Words, sharks, art, community, working together, thinking together. Well, thank you, friends, for uh, being with us today. And uh, we have a question. How am I doing today? Oh, I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. And I'm so glad to hear that you're doing well. Thanks for letting us know. In fact, before we go, if you have questions or comments, uh, we'll be on the lookout. Um, I want to let you know we are live 1 o'clock on the last Saturday of every month uh, on the DIA website and WIMI and Kent District Library and uh, the partnership and collaboration. So we'd love for you to join us. Here's the next one. Oh, man. On November 28, we are going to be inspired by Detroit-style car design in the Motor City. Oh, oh take a look at that, that painting right there. Can you imagine that car? Oh, that would be amazing to drive in that car. Oh, there's a bunch of cool stuff with that exhibit. And next month, we get to explore that. So thanks, friends. It's been a pleasure to be here. I'm going to sing a little bit of that song we started with, right? There's a shark in the hole, in the dolphin, in the octopus, and the frog, and the sea otter. I'm going to add more sea creatures. And the um, clownfish, and the other fish, uh, swordfish, and worms. I think there are worms down there, too. In the bottom of the sea, there's a shark and a dolphin and a squid and a sea and enemy in the bottom of the sea. <laughs> I'll keep singing. You keep singing, too, if you want. Bye, friends. Thanks, everybody. Did it.